Should we be teaching coding to learners in South Africa? I'm Jennifer Snasty, you're watching News 24 Live. I'm joined in studio by Alta Grief. She's going to answer that question for us. Hello, Alta. Hello, Jennifer. Now, you head up the Curo Center for Educational Excellence. Why don't you explain to us what you do there? What we do at the Curo Center for Educational Excellence is three things. The first one is we develop and innovate the South African curriculum to a world-class standard. And that's an ongoing process. The second thing is we build the capacity of our teachers in our Kiro schools to deliver that curriculum. And then the third one is we really value research and we, we, um, do our, we drive our own research agenda. And of course, we research the best practice in the world to make sure that we are on the right track. All right, well, uh, the first question I asked at the beginning of this show was, should we be teaching coding to learners in South Africa? What's the answer to that question? I think we need to go one step backwards. What we, what we should be doing in South Africa is to teach our learners the skills that they need to be able to not only survive but thrive in the 21st century. Now to come back to coding, coding is a wonderful vehicle to achieve that. Why is coding a wonderful vehicle to achieve that? Professor Guy Claxton, who recently worked with us in a conference, says that to spoon feed children is a modern day is a, is a modern form of child abuse. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think the one of the best reasons why coding is you can't spoon feed children when they are doing coding. They need to actually um, take the language that they are learning and they need to do something with it, and they can witness the effect of what they are doing. Mm -hmm. So it's just a w it's just impossible to do spoon feeding when you teach yeah. coding. Now, are you saying that coding needs to be introduced to the curriculum um, for the South African education system? Well, in Kiro, I can't speak for the for mm -hmm. the South African education system, but in Kiro, we've introduced the coding in 2011. We did our pilot. Mm -hmm. We started in 2012 in the form of robotics, um, and, and that's a, a specific kind of coding. But what makes robotics very nice is there's a physical something that you can actually see that moves. Um, I can tell you for the, the, the really young ones we do, we use Lego, a Lego set called We Do. And in We Do you have a little crocodile that you build first with the Lego blocks. And then you program the little crocodile to open his mouth. You can put something in his mouth and he will then chew on it. And after he's done that, he will fall asleep if you want him to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the children literally do drag and drop with icons or little pictures. Mm -hmm. And th they need to actually analyze what they want to happen into the basic steps, which is wonderful. They, um, th and th that's where the thinking skills come in, the kind of analytical thinking. Now, how old are you introducing um, children to coding? At what age? Um, we do it in grade two, which is normally the year in which children turn eight. Okay. But that's the world norm. Coding from eight to 11 year old is, a, is big news at the moment. Saying that to me sounds unbelievable. I mean, I don't know how to code. It sounds very hard to me, but, but when you explain it by dragging and dropping icons, I think I could do that. And, and you know, there are people who, who actually strongly disagree that, that, that the robotics programming is really coding, but the thinking skills are exactly the same. The thinking behind it, the breaking down of an effect into how will you, how will you actually manage to, to reach that effect. So it's, it's, uh, it's wonderful, you will be able to do it. Uh -huh. You just need half an hour to teach you. <laughs>